Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Ring Avulsion. All right, if you're a Jimmy Fallon fan, you might remember a few years ago when he took a couple weeks break from the show, and when he came back, he clearly had a hand injury, which he explained was, of course, the reason for his absence. What had happened is that Jimmy experienced ring avulsion. This horrible thing is an injury that occurs when you're wearing a ring on your finger and it catches on something or somehow creates so much pressure that it severely damages the soft tissue on your finger. And what I mean by severely damages is that it can basically like almost take your finger off without really taking it off, if you know what I mean. Or or it can like deglove it, where it's basically like skinned. Either way, it's absolutely terrible. And while Jimmy turned it into a great story, it's definitely not a pretty sight and a Google search could bring about some pretty gruesome image results. In our number nine spot today, we have the Victor Sayenko video. Victor is just one part of a group that is responsible for a string of in Ukraine that took place in June and July of 2007. In the end, he was charged with 29 separate incidents, 21 of which were and the rest were incidents where the victims thankfully survived the horrendous attacks. Aside from just how extremely terrible this entire thing is, the case gained a certain notoriety because of the fact that there was actually a recording of one of these crimes that was leaked and found its way onto the internet. That is because the people committing these acts had intended to sell the videos of them being done, which is thought to have been the biggest motivation for the crimes. In the end, Victor was found guilty of all of these crimes and is currently serving a life sentence, but that video still lurks a out there unfortunately on the internet and I think it definitely goes without saying that this is something that is just not safe for life. In our number eight spot today, we have insider trading. Listen, I don't know anything about trading or stocks or anything like that, but I have learned to never Google the words insider trading in an international account. Someone else made this mistake and ended up paying the consequences. Back in July of 2017, MIT researcher Fei Yan ended up being arrested after he Googled that phrase and then allegedly purchased a bunch of stock. The arresting charges were three counts of fraud because federal prosecutors claimed that this stock that was purchased made him $120,000 in illegal profits. Apparently, this guy was using information that was obtained through his spouse's job, which gave illegal insight into certain trading options in order to make these trades, but not before Googling how to avoid law enforcement while doing it, and a bunch of other things that created quite a clear timeline for authorities during the investigation. I guess this search is okay, should you not be planning to follow through on the illegal insider trading, but it's probably best just not to Google it at all, just to be as safe as possible. You don't want the police showing up at your door like the other guy. In our number seven spot today, we have the FDA Defect Levels Handbook. Each year, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, they release a report that details something that, honestly, I want to remain blissfully ignorant about. This report details what the maximum levels of different horrible things are that are legally allowed to to be in the food that we all eat. What I mean by horrible things is stuff like rodent hairs, maggots, you know, stuff you really don't want in your food at all because what in the actual world that's horrible? For your own sanity, this is a good search to stay away from, but if you're one of the people who is just way too curious to stay away from it, just remember that I tried to warn you. I mean, personally, I don't want to know how many bugs are allowed to be in my food. I just don't think I could handle it, okay? In our number six spot today, we have Crocodile. This is the nickname that is used to describe desomorphine, which is a morphine derivative that has some extremely strong effects. This illicit substance, unfortunately, has found its way into the lives of those battling addiction, and it has absolutely wreaked havoc, and the results of its usage are truly terrifying. Unfortunately, much of the production of this this substance is illegal, which only leads to an increase in the negative impact it has on the users. The side effects of it often are due to certain toxic substances, which does what is referred to as cooking the skin. Definitely sounds completely horrible. It can also lead to large-scale tissue infection or even damage in the area where it was administered. In fact, the effects of this substance are so bad that many refer to it as the flesh-eating drug. It's safe to say this is definitely something that no one should do and probably 
probably just don't Google it either. In our number five spot today, we have the Grizzly Tapes. Okay, you should never Google this because these videos should never be watched because this is something that should have never even been recorded. These tapes were the last thing left by Timothy Treadwell and his girlfriend. Timothy Treadwell was known as the Grizzly Man. He spent 13 years of his life going in and out of living with bears, which for the most part sounds like the most terrifying thing you could imagine, but for him, he wanted to show the world that you could live with bears and that they were not an animal to be feared. Well, even though he was able to spend over a decade in their presence, it's this living situation that would eventually lead to his death. Timothy was making a documentary about bears, so naturally he was spending quite a bit of time with them as he filmed. One day while he was with a grizzly and filming for the doc alongside his girlfriend who was there to help him with the movie, the bear that they were interacting with ended up turning angry, frightened, or something happened that changed its behavior because it went on to kill both members of the couple as the camera rolled on. It's horrible. You can't see too, too much of what is happening, but you sure can hear it all, which is definitely bad enough. In our number four spot today, we have a jigger. When I hear this word, my mind goes to the bartending tool. It's like a shot measurer, okay? After I finish up my work here, I go to work at a restaurant. I see these things every week. They're my friend. If you were interested in perhaps purchasing some new barware, however, be careful with your search when using this term. While the tool is all fine and well, a jigger flea is nightmare fuel. These little insects with the same name as the trusty tool like to burrow into skin where they then lay eggs. Yeah, definitely don't want any images of that coming up in your search. I'm just trying to look out for you, really. Yeah, these small little parasitic guys are only one millimeter at first, and when they initially burrow into your skin, it might just feel like a little itchy or whatever, but as their abdomen swell with eggs, pressure can be created, and this pressure could press on nerves or blood vessels, which not only is just awful to think about, but can cause pain that ranges from mild to severe. All in all, just be careful what you Google, because not everything is what it seems. In our number three spot today, we have the Steve Irwin Stingray video. Like, how random, honestly, but don't Google it. Like, why? This one really gets me right in the feels. Steve Irwin, best known as the Crocodile Hunter, was famous for his wildlife interactions, but as many of us know, this passion for animals and an interaction with one in particular sadly turned deadly. On September 4th, 2006, Steve was taking part in the production of a documentary series, Ocean's Deadliest. That day, there was some not-so-great weather, which led to a bit of a pause in the filming. Since nothing was really going on, Steve decided to take a bit of a snorkel into the shallow waters nearby, and they filmed as he did this. He wanted to use the footage in his daughter's TV show, Bindi the Jungle Girl. As they swam in the water that day, Steve approached a stingray that was about two meters large, or six and a half feet, and he approached it from the back in order to try and get some footage of it swimming away. That is not what this stingray did, though. Instead, it propped on its front and started stabbing wildly with its tail as a defensive response. Unfortunately, this caused one of the bar pieces to pierce Steve's heart, which unfortunately led to his death. Despite the crew members administering CPR and rushing him to shore, there was just nothing that could be done. It is believed that this was the only fatality from a stingray that has ever been recorded on video. This is, of course, just tragic, but it also led to a bit of a war against stingrays afterwards. For weeks after his death, stingrays were being found on the beaches of Queensland with their tails cut off. No one is sure if this was done as an act of revenge against stingrays everywhere or what the case was. But uh, yeah, this is one video that don't Google. No one wants to see it. It's just terrible. It's sad. In our number two spot today, we have found in fast food. Of course, we have all heard tales of people making stuff up to try and get some kind of free food from their favorite fast food restaurants, but also there are some very real, very disturbing stories out there of stuff people have found, and it is all too searchable. If you searched things people have found in fast food, you'd be met with enough evidence to make you question every fast food meal you have ever and will ever eat in your life. People have found hardware parts, human skin, an entire rat, bugs, hair, and even a whole chicken head. I have a million questions, but I don't even want to attempt a Google search to find out the answers because I'm scared of what I might find out. Reading enough of these harrowing fast food tales is enough to ruin anyone's appetite. In our number one spot today, we have mouth larva. Pretty self-explanatory as to why you shouldn't Google this one, and I'm not even sure why anyone would. Maybe in an attempt to find moth larva information and there was a bit of a typo, but even then, maybe just stay away from Googling 
handling that as well. Whatever reason you might be thinking of or accidentally typing mouth larva into the search bar, it's best to refrain from because this is one search that will just gross you right out. This search will definitely yield results of humans and other animals that have larva crawling in between their teeth. Yep, exactly what it sounds like, mouth larva. Larva and mouths. It's horrible, it's disgusting, and there's not only photos, but there's videos too, in case you wanted to get really weird. Just because you can Google these things does not mean you should. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have bot fly removal. Okay, we're starting off strong. Taylor and I used to watch this vet show a lot, and there were a lot of these on there, and let me tell you, it is not for everyone. If you're a fan of things like Dr. Pimple Popper, you might be able to stomach this one, but should that not be up your alley, this is a Google search to definitely stay away from. Bot flies are these pesky little flies that like to lay their egg in a host. The host, which can be human or animal, will have to deal with a horrifying, fat, flesh-eating bot fly maggot, which will later need to be removed from your skin. It is horrible. People will go to the doctor or take their animal to the vet because they noticed a strange bump. Little do they know, there is actually an entire maggot living in their skin. It's honestly disgusting. The, just the thought of it gives me chills, but there is relief at the end, which is always good. It's honestly just surprising to see the damage that these creatures leave behind, but you'll thank me later if you just don't Google it. It's one image I'll never be able to erase from my mind. In our number nine spot today, we have locked in syndrome. We've all heard of sleep paralysis, but what if I told you that there was a worse, scarier version of it? Locked in syndrome is like sleep paralysis, but the awake version. It's a condition which renders the patient completely unable to move, aside from vertical eye movements and blinking. The patient is completely conscious and aware of what is happening and able to communicate with eye movements, but everything else is well, locked in. The cause of this is due to damage in the lower brain and brain stem with no damage to the upper parts. This can happen from things like poisoning, a brain stem stroke, a traumatic brain injury, or a lesion of the brain stem, as well as many other factors. The scariest thing, however, is that there is an even worse version called total locked in syndrome, where the patient isn't even able to move their eyes. Unfortunately, most people who experience this never have any significant motor function return, as there really isn't a cure. There have been people who have made a spontaneous full recovery though, so there certainly is hope. But aside from this hope, learning about this sent me down a total rabbit hole of similar conditions I had no idea about. I don't know how people get through medical school learning about the multitude of horrifying things that could potentially happen to a person. In our number eight spot today, we have pillows under a microscope. This one may seem a little specific, but just you wait. Pillows are the thing we rest our weary heads on every night to get our eight hours. Who am I kidding? Most of us are getting what? Four, regardless of whoever sleeps the most or the least, our pillows all are going to be looking a little similar. The pillow seems so inviting, so warm, so cozy. It's a safe place, right? Wrong. You get up close to that thing, view it under a microscope, and you reveal all the other things that also like to rest their little heads on it. Under a microscope, the common house dust mites that lurk on many of our pillows become alarmingly visible, and as we speak, there's probably more than you'd like to know living on yours. These guys like to live on your pillow because their favorite food is your dead skin cells. Yeah. It's disgusting. I'd appreciate it if they could at least do something to alleviate nightmares, but no, they just are the nightmare. In our number seven spot today, we have feeding time at an eel farm. One day on Reddit, I came across a video that was titled feeding time at an eel farm, which I mean is exactly what the video is. But man, I was not expecting it to look like this. As soon as they drop the food in, a bunch of freaky little water snakes immediately start jumping at it. But like, when I say a bunch, it's so much more that I could have ever expected. There is something about this video that really feeds into the whole fear of the ocean thing. And while this video is definitely oddly terrifying, it's also important to note the danger of these eel farms, especially for the kinds of eels that are endemic to an area, those that are endangered, or both. Eels are long living creatures who only breed once and they don't do it in captivity. When most of a generation of eels are caught, it proves to be a really large problem in terms of population. In our number six spot today, we have zombie ants. These infected creatures are so horrifying to me. They honestly are like nightmare fuel. There is a type of insect pathogenic fungus that is commonly found in tropical forest ecosystems. This fungus infects a certain kind of ant, and once infected, this ant 
basically turns into a zombie. Good news is, the ant doesn't suddenly go around eating others of its kind, but it is still being controlled and manipulated by this fungus. The ant will leave their nest in usual trails and head for the forest floor which has better conditions for fungal growth. From here, the ant will then bite and attach itself to the major vein on a leaf and basically they just stay there until they die, which is usually around 4 to 10 days. During these days, the fungus will basically start to sprout out of the ant's head so as to be prepared to infect the next unsuspecting creature and that is what Google will show you awful images of. Maybe it's because I hate bugs so much that this one disturbs me, but I don't know. It's just really unsettling. I get like Last of Us vibes from this one. In our number 5 spot today we have lamprey eye disease. I'll be totally honest and upfront with you. This is something that is not real and instead was a classic internet hoax, but that doesn't mean it wasn't based on a real thing and it also doesn't mean that the very unsettling photoshopped photos of it aren't completely upsetting imagery. Basically, a lamprey is a real waterbound parasite fish that has ancient lineage here on earth and they also have the creepiest looking head in the world. So the people of the internet decided to create and spread news of this fake disease inspired by the real creature's weird head and thus lamprey disease was born. And in my opinion, lamprey eye disease was the worst of all of the lamprey options. It's exactly what it sounds like and basically a search of lamprey eye disease will reveal images of a person whose eye has been photoshopped to appear like the head of that parasite. While I can rest easy knowing I'll never experience this in real life, there are some images that just should never exist, whether photoshopped or not. In our number 4 spot today we have the 80s Kleenex commercial. There is a legend that suggests there is actually a curse surrounding this really weird and creepy Kleenex commercial that aired in the 80s. The commercial itself is very strange and it depicts some sort of ogre child thing being sung to by a woman who is acting really strangely and the song she is singing is also perfectly fit for a horror movie. The ad was quickly pulled from the air as it had people calling in explaining that they were really creeped out by it, but of course the internet took hold of it beforehand. So that creepy looking child I mentioned before, well many people believe that it resembles an oni demon. There are of course major consequences for looking at a demon which is exactly what this urban legend surrounds. Basically, legend goes that the crew who worked in this commercial production ended up all passing away after working on the commercial, all in really mysterious ways which people of course believe is due to the demon on set. All in all, I think these haunting tales are enough to have me staying away from googling it any further. In our number 3 spot today we have The Island of the Dolls. The Island of the Dolls is basically exactly what it sounds like and while it is exceptionally creepy to look at, the story behind it is even more disturbing. The island sits in the canals south of Mexico City and is the home of many, many absolutely terrifying and mutilated dolls. Even in the daylight, dolls look creepy with their missing limbs and heads and weird beady eyes, but at nighttime, the island is nightmare fuel. The story behind this island is very tragic. It starts off with the only person on the island, Don Julian Santana, finding a body. He was of course absolutely beside himself over this gruesome discovery, and shortly after he saw a doll floating by in the water. He strung the doll up in a tree in order to appease her soul and to protect the island from evil. While this is an extremely dark story and the dolls are very, very creepy, I think we can all certainly understand why the dolls definitely needed to stay there. In our number 2 spot today we have thrush. If you are searching this term looking for a plump, soft plumaged, small to medium sized bird, you might want to be a little more specific. This is because just the general term might have Google confusing your harmless bird interest for something else. Thrush is also the term used to describe a certain infection caused by a yeast which is called candida. Candida lives on and in all of us, but sometimes Sometimes there can be a change that causes it to multiply and this can cause an infection and an overgrowth. Thrush is seen when the fungal growth takes over the mouth, throat or esophagus and while this is not something that is uncommon at all, it definitely can be a bit surprising when you expected a cute little bird and instead got images of someone's esophagus. This is one google search that you definitely need to be clear about what you're searching for because who knows what results might show up. In our number 1 spot today we have your symptoms. 
it really is the classic tale. You start having symptoms, whether common ones or not, and you take to the search bar to input those symptoms, hoping for some kind of an answer or perhaps a home remedy, and boom, you are met with the news. Your symptoms could only mean one thing, a rare terminal illness. I swear, according to Google, that is the answer every time. And to be honest, this could be quite dangerous in a multitude of ways. Firstly, the panic. It's always best not to send yourself into a downward spiral for no reason, and it is definitely true that a Google search is not the same as a real doctor visit. Now, I totally know that a doctor visit isn't always accessible to everyone, and sometimes we do have to rely on a bit of our own research to carry us through, but be wary of the results. Don't get too spooked at what you see come back, but if you do happen to get worried, it's always good to get a second opinion when you can. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the inside of your stomach. I'm not entirely sure why anyone would want to Google this, but if you're curious about some of your intestinal anatomy, you perhaps are looking for a nicely colored diagram to learn more about what's going on in your own body, but unfortunately, that's not all that comes up on one of these searches. Googling the inside of your stomach will have some image results of, well, the inside of your stomach. What did you think? It's exactly what you asked for, but let me be clear. That is not a sight for everybody. Looking at these images would definitely make quite a few of us sick to our stomachs, unless you're a medical student or a professional, or just know that you can handle the graphic images that might pop up on the screen. This is definitely a search that should just stay out of your history. In our number nine spot today, we have pressure cooker backpacks. This one is gonna be pretty self-explanatory, but someone learned the hard way that the combination of googling the words pressure cooker bombs and then backpacks is one that no one should dare. In 2013, a Suffolk County man googled these things and the police later showed up to his house. I mean, yeah, it's definitely a strange combination of things to google one after the other, but in case it isn't just a coincidence, I'm glad someone is looking out for these kinds of things. In the end, after some investigation, the police were able to determine that there was no threat and that the man was just feeling a little curious that day. I'm sure he also learned a very valuable lesson and likely regrets his search history. In our number eight spot today, we have the brain-eating amoeba. Negleria fowleri is more commonly known as the brain-eating amoeba for a pretty fair reason, and this is one of those things that once you learn about it, it can kind of uh, send you down a rabbit hole. All right, we've all been there. This parasite is single-celled and thrives in warm bodies of water. It can enter the human body when water that contains the amoeba enters the nose. It will then travel from there via the olfactory nerves, and within a few days, symptoms will begin to present themselves. The parasite can cause a brain infection known as meningoencephalitis, which can cause severe brain inflammation. How was that for a one time? Just one shot. Pretty impressive. That's a big word. Symptoms will start with a fever, a headache, some nausea, and vomiting and a stiff neck. Eventually though, the symptoms will progress into lack of attention, loss of balance, seizures, hallucinations. The parasite will most likely put the host into a coma and almost 100% of the people who have been infected have lost their lives. This is all to say this terrifying parasite is one that I would refrain from Googling unless you just wanna be totally freaked out about its existence. I know I just told you about it, but don't Google because it only gets worse from here. In our number seven spot today, we have the dark web. Just one of those really self-explanatory things. The dark web has stuff on it that we don't even want to begin to think about. And not only this, but just casually trying to access the dark web is likely to have you being added to some kind of internet watch list somewhere. A search for the dark web might reveal some odd conspiracy theories that might get you roped in. It might show you some horrific content you definitely don't want to see, or you might even see yourself getting hacked or a virus, or who knows, any of the other disgusting stuff that lurks on the dark corners of the internet. Who am I kidding? I feel like the dark web takes up more space on the internet than I want to know. All I'm saying is, hi, how are you? Let's all stay on this side of the internet, the fun, nice side, where we talk about creepy stuff, but we don't do creepy stuff. You know what I'm saying? In our number six spot today, we have Calculus Bridge. At first, I thought this was just like a terrifying math problem or something, but as it turns out, it really is just a dentist's nightmare. In the dental world, the word calculus means something very different. Basically, what dental calculus is, when you don't properly brush or floss dental plaque away, it can combine with the minerals that are in your saliva and eventually turn into calculus. While regular plaque can be brushed away, you definitely need professional help in order to get rid of calculus. Now, calculus 
bridge is like a step up from regular calculus. According to Doctor of Dental Surgery Gary Schlaughterer, quote, a calculus bridge occurs when tartar or calculus builds up so much that it connects with the adjacent teeth and forms a solid bridge of deposits. You can visually see this bridge due to its brown or tan color along the edge of the teeth by the gum line, but of course, when we Google this term, images is only going to show us some of the most severe cases, which can see the bridge extending into the gum line or further along the surface of the teeth. Unless you're particularly interested in dental hygienics, this might be a good search to just stay away from. In our number five spot today, we have a chicken laying an egg. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, I'm fairly certain it was the egg. We can discuss that all later because what we are discussing right now is why you should never Google a chicken laying an egg. I feel like this is hopefully pretty self-explanatory, but it's definitely a strange sight. You'd be surprised how much chicken egg laying content there is out there though. I mean, one of the top results when I searched this was a YouTube video called chicken laying an egg exclamation point. And then in parentheses, close up three, which I think insinuates a close up two and one, and I'm just gonna say it. Who needs three separate parts of close up shots? That's weird. Anyway, some things I think are better left to the imagination and some are best just not being thought of at all. And I think this counts as one of those. In our number four spot today, we have Ed Gein's house. Ed Gein was an absolute monster and is the basis for many horror movies today because of how horrifying his crimes were. Inside of his home, authorities found different household items that were made out of body parts, some from the victims of his crimes and some from the graves he would go and search and snatch from. There are some photos circulating the incident that are more tame, but some of them show just a drop of the horrors that lay inside of the home. For a while, for some unknown reasons, it was thought that they might use this house as a tourist attraction, but thankfully, the house ended up burning down. And honestly, I feel truly glad that it doesn't exist anymore. Save yourself the real life nightmare and just refrain from Googling anything to do with Ed Gein, unless you want to see lamps made out of humans. In our number three spot today, we have historical Halloween costumes. In this day and age, when Halloween time comes around, we see all types of costumes. We see a few spooky, scary ones, but for the most part, we see princesses or fairies or basketball players or some sort of pop culture reference. But back in the day, Halloween was a terrifying time. And I'm not saying that because people dressed as these elaborate, scary creatures. I just mean the absolute scraps that people had to throw together to make a Halloween mask are true scarier than any creature I could ever come up with. Googling Halloween costumes from history will bring up photos showing a nice little family as they're ready to celebrate the spookiest day of the year, but their costumes are full on terror inducing. It just gives me the strangers vibes. It's very unsettling. In our number two spot today, we have the wet koala. I love little koala bears. They're cute, they're always just chillin'. I feel like most people enjoy a nice photo of a koala, all right, brighten your day a bit. But for some strange reason, when you Google wet koala, everything changes. Wet koala searches bring back results of koalas that appear to be drenched in some sort of water. But for some reason, in all of these photos, the demeanor of the koala has changed. These wet koalas are not the nice, kind, cuddly, adorable ones I thought I knew, and instead are these angry, menacing, teeth-bearing ones that I really never expected to see. Okay, as it turns out, the teeth bearing one is actually all thanks to Photoshop, but I still stand by my original point. That Photoshop job really made me think of koalas in a different light, and the original photos they used to Photoshop still don't have the koalas looking too happy. Maybe they just aren't a fans of the rain, I don't know. In our number one spot today, we have eyelashes. In the last part of this video series, we talked about Googling your pillow under a microscope, and now we are talking about Googling your eyelashes is under a microscope. Our eyelashes help keep our eyes clean and the stray ones give us witches and they seem like harmless little easygoing hairs, right? Well, turns out when we go a little closer, our eyelashes are the home to a disgusting little secret. The lashes aren't really the problem. The more concerning thing is the creatures that call them home. Mm -hmm. These creatures called demodex are mites that live on everyone's eyelashes. They, like the pillow bugs, feed off of dead skin cells as well as the oils that collect in the follicles. Okay, are you ready for the worst part? I know, it's crazy that we aren't even past it yet, but here we go. At nighttime, while you're sleeping, these guys come out of your eyelashes and head onto other regions of your face, and this is where they breed, okay? They then return to your lash follicles to lay up to 25 eggs. 
Yeah, I don't know. I woke up like just a couple hours ago and I'm still trying to recover from what just happened to me. All right, I don't like it. I don't like it. Wash your face, wash your eyelashes and get out of here. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Guinea worm disease. This is a neglected tropical disease that is caused by a parasite and it really is just terrible. This disease unfortunately affects poor communities, especially in remote areas of the world that do not have water that is safe to drink. Basically what happens with this disease is a person and will become infected after drinking water containing the water fleas that are infected with the larva of the guinea worm. That already sounds terrible to me, but it does get worse. The worms will then penetrate the digestive tract and stay here while they grow to size. Okay, even worse, but it keeps going. About a year later, these horrible creatures will then migrate to a spot where they want to exit, normally somewhere on a lower limb. From here, they will create a very painful blister on the skin, which will eventually burst into an excruciatingly painful opening. Open wound. From here, the real nightmare starts because not only is the pain terrible, but it will last for several weeks while a long, sometimes up to one meter, string-like worm will slowly crawl out of this wound. It honestly makes me sick thinking about it. This process can have a person totally unable to really move for around three to ten weeks. It takes for the worm to leave the body. This is Complete nightmare fuel. At this point, there isn't a treatment or prevention for this disease other than having access to safe water, of course, which should be a reality for every human. In good news, however, the number of cases of this has dropped drastically since the mid-1980s, and hopefully it could be on its way to eradication. All in all, unless you want a complete horror show and some awful imagery burned into your brain forever, maybe skip the Google search of this one. All right, I told you what you need to know. In our number nine spot today, we have crime scene photos. There are unfortunately are many crime scene photos on the internet that are just one simple search away, but today we are talking about just one, and that is the Nikki Cat Suarez crash scene photos. In October of 2006, Nikki was 18 and driving her father's Porsche in Lake Forest in California when she unfortunately lost control of the vehicle and crashed. The crash is said to have been extremely gruesome, and like any crime scene, photos were taken of it. Unfortunately, these photos did end up getting leaked through emails, and from there they were posted to and spread on the internet. It has become abundantly clear that Nikki's family does not want people looking at these photos. So other than the fact that something like this is just not safe for life, I think they are making a perfectly reasonable request that definitely should be respected where possible. All this to say, I didn't and won't be googling any of these photos. In our number 8 spot today we have trypophobia. This word was really coined or created back in 2005 when someone posted about it on an online forum, and although it is not an officially recognized disorder, it is possible to be diagnosed as a specific phobia in extreme cases, and it's a thing that many, many of us experience on some level. Basically, Wikipedia describes trypophobia as, quote, an aversion to the sight of irregular patterns or clusters of small holes or bumps. This means that a Google search of the word will have all of the worst images for someone experiencing trypophobia popping up right at the top. It's honestly so strange how something like this could make such a large number of people horrifically uncomfortable, but alas, it really does. Scientists aren't quite sure how trypophobia really developed, there's quite a limited understanding of it due to limited research, but right now the leading theory is that it is possible that it could be a bit of an evolutionary revulsion where we as humans associate this sort of imagery with disease or poison or other danger. Well that is pretty fascinating, I'm just warning you, the results could be nauseating. I'm like mid-level trypophobic, I feel like, like I experience mild discomfort seeing these images, but I know for some some people it's full blown horror. If you're a trypophobe though, you might want to skip this next point. In our number 7 spot today we have the surname Toad Birth. Okay. So these little toads, Suriname toads, are these flat, leaf-looking amphibians from South America and they find their home in the rainforests of the area. That is all fine. Frogs are kind of cute. That is until it's time for these guys to reproduce. That is because during mating season, the males will deposit dozens of fertilized eggs onto the female's backs. Okay, a little unusual, not too bad. Well, until that female's skin starts to grow around these eggs like bubble wrap to keep them safe. For the next few months, the eggs develop in these little special enclosures, but once it's time for birth is where the real horror starts. These little guys eventually just erupt from the back of the mom. It's just a horrifying birthing experience. And if you have trypophobia, like we just talked about, then this is truly a worse nightmare. To anyone, this is a pretty disgusting sight, but that fear will only heighten the dramatics of this one. There are plenty
plenty of videos of this birthing process all over the internet. And while some of these videos definitely went viral, it's for all of the wrong reasons. In our number six spot today, we have the seahorse birth. Speaking of animals giving birth in strange ways, let's talk about the reasons why you should never Google a seahorse giving birth. I can't be the only one who is highly, highly uncomfortable by the sight, but I'm not entirely sure why I don't like it. Seahorses are pretty cool, they're pretty cute, and generally, I personally don't have a problem with them. That is, until they start shooting out kids by the dozen. There aren't many birthing processes that look like it's a fun, nice time, but this one really just looks stressful. An interesting thing about seahorse reproduction is that the males of this species are actually responsible for carrying the children. Seahorse fathers incubate their developing embryos in a pouch located on their tail. Their tail basically serves as the equivalent of a female uterus seen in mammals. When birthing time rolls around, these fathers are giving birth by basically shooting these babies out of the tail, but there's thousands of them. It looks like the seahorse is having contractions or maybe something similar. Definitely not a scientist, but with every contraction, thousands of tiny little baby seahorses pop out. And while the miracle of life is a beautiful process, it also leaves me feeling really uncomfortable. Super happy for the new dad and all, just don't want to be flooded with seahorse birthing videos, personally. Taking off the list at number 10, swatting services. Not that swat. We'll kick this list off with a more popular dark web original. Swatting services to swat somebody is, well, it's just that. You pay this dark web service like $20, and then somebody on the other end makes a fake call with their IP address and stuff all mixed up, and usually it's something life-threatening, or an explosive is involved in this fake claim, and in orderly fashion, a SWAT team will just arrive. They'll literally kick down your door, and you'll have no idea. Using phone number encryption or throwaway phones, it's rather easy, dare I say. The price to pay if you get caught for, you know, getting a service like this is obviously not cheap, but still, it's quite common. Clint Eastwood was swatted back in 2013. Even Simon Cowell got the heat in 2012. Somebody got a swatter to make a fake claim that the producer had been kidnapped. So they showed up and he was at home completely clueless. Imagine kicking down the door and seeing Simon Cowell there. He's like, that was absolutely dreadful. Get on up then, fix me door. The FBI is working alongside international agencies right now to put a stop to it because, well, it's a pretty horrible event for every party involved. Also for the swat, taxpayers' money just gone. Just to kick a door in, easy. Number nine, stolen goods. Wait a hot minute, people on the internet steal things? I feel sick, I feel betrayed. Yeah, this next one isn't surprising, but still it's pretty batshit insane. There's a professional kleptomaniac who will steal anything for you. He's out there somewhere, I'm not gonna say their name, but they're there. Just not the Declaration of Independence. They probably can't steal that. We've seen a movie on how hard that is to do. All you have to do is send them Bitcoin, a photo of what you want, and voila, stolen goods will arrive. All you have to do is pay a criminal through the dark web. How simple is that? This dude also just loves to steal regardless, because on his site or his little blog, whatever, he has items that he stole for people, but then ended up backing out. Or things he's come across and thought, you know what, that would be really nice to sell through the dark web later on. Yeet. He just steals things and it's like, hey, does anyone want anything? I have tons of things. Horrible. Don't buy any stolen goods, ever. Number eight, always watching. One of my biggest fears when I'm using my computer is that my webcam is still somehow on and running and somebody's watching me. Like I'm covered in Dorito dust at 2 a.m. It's not a great sight. Cover that up. I put a little bit of tape there. That's how paranoid I am. Comment down below if you also tape down your webcams, you freaks. This next one comes from a Redditor who shared their experience with the dark web and their visit, and it gave me goosebumps. This was before Google, they say, when web pages were more or less just basic HTML with JavaScript. They were browsing random threads or blogs, early days of the internet, you know, link to link type deal, reading about labradoodles, whatever you can find. Then they came across this thread that was like an early Twitter almost, just random accounts posting their random thoughts, and at the top of this thread, there was a new post with their IP address, and in all lowercase text, the message said, we see you. No, bye. Normally that's not a huge deal, but the message was uploaded right when they were scrolling to the top, and when they clicked another link, another message popped up saying, hello there. Okay there, Obi-Wan Kenobi looking ass. Now at that point, I would just break my webcam. It would be gone, I'd fold my laptop, backwards. These files ended up tracing back to an IP address in Colorado for somebody who worked in some sort of medical department, so that's nice. In between procedures, he's like, hello there, welcome. Number seven, credit cards. It comes to no shock that around 11 million Americans report credit card theft a year, and the dark web, 
definitely is not helping that. There's this lovely service online that sells credit card information, social security numbers, anything of yours that you don't want out in the public, essentially, they got you covered. It's pretty twisted. The more money you pay, the bigger the account you get is, obviously. Also, I'm talking like money as in 20 to $80. And you have to pay in Bitcoin as well, so it's challenging. This sounds like a terrible idea on so many levels. $20 and then your life is ruined, as well as somebody else's. The FBI is on this. I mean, 11 million Americans go through this, so we gotta figure out something, right? Back in 2010, the FBI ran a fake site and ended up busting 24 scammers, saving around 400,000 victims. That's wild. That's that's a lot of people. They would have been screwed. Getting back at the rich is one thing, but paying $20 for a CEO's credit card, there you go, go right to jail, it's that way. Number six, Netflix. I'm so private about my Netflix account, I have no idea why. Same as my Spotify, I just get anxious. I don't want people knowing that I'm watching glass blowing shows at 3 a.m. I keep that to myself, that's private time, that's for me. Or cooking shows. Those are both nice. But when it comes to the dark web, people might be using your account. Yeah, imagine somebody else finishing Ozark before you even get to, worst crime of all. Your account is worth pennies, apparently. On these black market sites, you can piggyback off of a paying customer, have their login and password, and then just secretly use their Netflix. But again, if somebody was watching Peppa Pig at 4 a.m., odds are you'll be suspicious. So these accounts come and go often, hence the low asking price. This is a challenging part of the internet still, especially users that are older and not too aware the dangers online. These fake emails go out saying it's from Netflix and they're requesting a password change and all that jazz. And people believe it, sadly. I myself almost fallen into one of these traps. I'm like, oh shit, Netflix just texted me about my credit card. I gotta go pay them back. I'm like, oh, Netflix just texted me about my OSAT payments. That's weird, I'm gonna go call them. Number five, wish pills. Have you ever asked your wish for other wishes? Have you ever tossed a coin into a fountain and then wished all your dreams would just come true? If so, that's pretty normal. We're not gonna ask too many questions here. We've all had a birthday wish. We're dreamers here on Most Amazing Top 10, we get it. But would you ever buy a wish online, let alone buy a wish from the dark web? What does that even mean? Also, let's talk about it. Well, you can pay a small fee and receive a pill just a pill that supposedly will grant a wish. There's so much wrong here. I mean, first of all, never order any pill from the dark web. The place is, of course, littered with narcotics, so that'll go poorly most of the time. And secondly, what a waste of money. Shipping is not cheap. That pill is coming from Chris Angel's home. It's like at least $17, maybe more. Number four mystery boxes. Perhaps one of the most compelling parts of the dark web has to be this mystery box craze. Do you remember this? I remember this. It was scary. YouTubers would just film themselves receiving a random item or a box rather from the dark web. Now these items range in designer clothes, maybe it's a new phone, or maybe it's something absolutely horrible. We love to gamble. 50-50. One YouTuber ended up pulling this child's book out, but it was already colored in with all these haunting images and colors. Sometimes you would get nothing as well. Yeah, it's like the internet's shady almost. Hmm. YouTuber Alex Maynard tossed a hundred bucks towards this mystery exchange and all they got was a note, handwritten of course, that said, you shouldn't accept packages from strangers. Good luck. Honestly, I think it's the best case scenario here. Just receiving a life lesson instead of like, I don't know, a finger? I'll take it, that's good. Number three, uranium. Ah yes, the key ingredient to making a nuclear weapon. Uranium, good stuff. Back in 1938, the world was changed forever when German nuclear physicists discovered nuclear fission. They discovered what would happen if an atom were to split. Well, what happens is it causes a massive explosion. The bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki alone, I mean thousands of lives, were lost instantly and we're still selling small amounts of uranium on the dark web. Humans are awesome. Great. The amount sold, of course, is incredibly small compared to the amount used in warfare, but still, don't buy uranium off the dark web. Don't buy any chemicals from the dark web for that matter. This is a list on what not to do, but what you can do right now is hit that thumbs up. Kind of, you know, change the energy up. Don't buy uranium, instead, hit that thumbs up. Number two, alien footage. Honestly, there's one thing on this list that makes me kind of want to visit the dark web. This has got to be a tinfoil hat ahoy. Not a new phone, not a new watch, but alien footage. That's apparently something that can come your way. I would leave this freak a five-star Yelp review if I could. Imagine paying an anonymous source some bitcoins and then you get this. This video was found in the depths of the deep dark web and it's a little convincing. A little convincing. I mean, they're showing UFOs whipping through the skies now on news, so that's a normal thing, apparently. So who really knows? The footage is from 1992 and supposedly was filmed in Switzerland and it shows a cold little alien. Just a little, 
little dude. The typical look as well, the big eyes, the big head, humanoid shape, real Independence Day vibes almost, so odds are it's obviously fake. But again, what an odd thing to pay for and then receive from the internet. The full video shows different angles of this little alien being held up by wire in some sort of cold lab. Now, I'm not trying to convince you that aliens are real, at least not in this video. I'm trying to convince you instead to not look for videos of them on the dark web because I had to browse and I saw some sh** I want to see. Still. And finally, number one, more mystery boxes. There's a lot of videos of YouTubers opening these things and it's terrifying. So we figured we'd cap this list off with a few of our faves. Crypto NWO uploaded their mystery box adventure quite recently and it's just as horrible as you'd expect. They open up this stuffed bear wearing leather cuffs and in the center of the stuffed animal's chest, there is a clock. I gotta say, the speed at which they pull this thing out, it looks like an explosive. Don't yank any clocks out from a dark web box ever. Oh my God. They continue and find clothes, a blue mask, like one of those, you know, Jabberwocky masks that's blue, a green little skeleton rubber toy thing, and one of the scariest things of all time, a Luigi walkie-talkie. Yeah, this is when they throw on the rubber gloves, which is a pretty good idea. That's when it starts to get a little strange. Would you ever say hello to a walkie-talkie from the dark web? Are you insane? I would. I'd be like, who's there? Beep, 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 beep. The best part, perhaps, in this entire unboxing video is when they pull out what they think is a phone that vibrates. It's not. Starting off this countdown, we have the fear of the unknown. During an interview with astronaut Chris Hadfield, he said that the thing he feared the most about going into space was the fear of the unknown. Because anything can go wrong at any time. Plus, no matter how much you prepare, there's no way you can prepare for everything that could go wrong. Because you don't know everything that can go wrong. Plus, astronauts are miles away from home with limited supplies and contact. They're pretty much on their own to save themselves if anything does go wrong. So it's the fear of not knowing what's to come that terrifies them. In our ninth spot, we have space junk. Obviously, space is filled with floating space objects, but also tons of man-made junk, like debris from old satellites, rocket ship pieces, lost equipment, you name it. It said that there are 28 million pieces of space debris floating around up there. That's about 6,000 tons of space debris. On top of that, each piece flies around at 18,000 miles per hour. At any second, debris could crash into the astronaut spacecraft and wipe them out. In fact, it's said that even tiny paint flecks can damage a spacecraft when traveling at these velocities. Imagine what anything larger could do. So space junk is certainly something astronauts fear. I mean, I wouldn't be able to sleep. I would be way too paranoid. In our eighth spot, we have loss of communication. When astronauts are in space, they rely on ground control to help them out. Ground control plays a critical part in the space mission success. They make sure that everything goes as planned and that the craft stays on course. So imagine how frightening it would be to all of a sudden lose lose contact with them. Astronauts are then left alone just floating through space. They then would have to manually fly their spacecraft home. Astronauts have lost connection a couple of times, but it's only been for a couple of hours. Moving on to number seven, we have the toxic atmosphere. According to NASA astronaut Drew Morgan, he is worried about space's toxic atmosphere. He admitted to this on social media when responding to a comment that read, what is the biggest and most terrifying thing astronauts fear about being in space? There are a number of things in space that make it so deadly for astronauts. For starters, exposure to space can cause ebolism, hypoxia, and hypocapnia. Not only that, but astronauts can get sick from being on the moon. When the Apollo astronauts returned from the moon, they got sick off of the moon dust on their spacesuits. It made their throat sore and eyes water. The particles are so fine, but sharp like glass. In fact, it said that, and I quote, particles 50 times smaller than a human hair can hang around for months inside your lungs. The longer the particle stays, the greater the chance for toxic effects. But there are so many other things in space that can have a negative impact on the astronauts, like exposure to UV rays and radiation, which can cause cell mutation. Also, there's no pressure in space. The lower the pressure, the lower a liquid's boiling point is. But since in space there is no pressure, the boiling point can easily drop to an astronaut's body temperature, meaning their blood and other liquids in their body would start to boil. Not a pleasant way to go, that's for sure. In our sixth spot, we have the depressurization. Astronaut Drew Morgan claims that astronauts are also scared of depressurization. He said, and I quote, there's always the possibility that we could depressurize or that a hole could be punctured by a micrometeoroid or something and we could leak our atmosphere overboard. So let's say that an astronaut was exposed directly to the vacuum of space. 
space. Since space doesn't have atmospheric pressure, the astronauts lungs will expand and burst. After that, the water in their soft tissues will vaporize, causing their whole body to swell up. Then bubbles would form in the veins, blocking blood flow. And the astronauts bowels, bladder and stomach will explode, expelling their contents. But don't worry, the astronaut would die from loss of oxygen first before all of that happens. Still, it's terrifying to think of. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with getting sick. In space, there's no hospitals, there's no nurses, there's no doctors. So if you get sick or injured, you're on your own. You need to rely on your crew members to help you out. This is another fear for astronauts, getting sick while in space or seeing their crew get sick while in space. Also, if one person gets sick somehow, chances are others will too. Space is a pretty germy environment. When a person sneezes on Earth, the snot particles shoot out about three to six feet and then gravity knocks them out of the air into the floor. But in space, there's no gravity. So if an astronaut sneezes or coughs, it's lingering in the air for their companions to breathe in and enjoy. As a result, sickness or diseases can spread really fast. Another fear they have is dying in orbit because A, that would suck and B, what are the crew members supposed to do with the astronaut's dead body? They'll be stuck living beside it for days until they return home. Has to be traumatizing. Moving on to number four, we have the mechanical failures. This is another fear that Chris Hadfield brought up that's common among astronauts. And that's fear that they will experience some sort of mechanical failure or defect, whether that be during liftoff, while in orbit, docking, or re-entry. I mean, there have been a number of disasters already, like the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. In 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into the flight. As a result, the shuttle broke down over the Atlantic Ocean, and all seven crew members on board lost their lives. This was due to a failure of the O-ring seal in the right solid rocket booster. In space, if their spacecraft fails or if their systems malfunction, they're pretty much screwed. So no one can come out there to save them. Moving on, number three, we have floating off into space. Although it's never happened to any astronauts so far, it's a very real fear that astronauts have. And hey, I don't blame them. Anyways, if astronauts spacewalk, they have to tether themselves down. If those tethers fail, oh boy, they're drifting out into space. No matter how much they kick or flail their arms, it won't bring them back to the shuttle. Now NASA does have these emergency jetpack things that can help fly them back to safety. But if the fuel runs out, they're in trouble. They'll be floating around for seven and a half hours until their breathable air runs out. Or until they get hit by space junk and die. Or the space junk could cause a hole in their helmet or suit and then we know what would happen, okay? So yeah, I can see why astronauts are afraid of getting separated from the spacecraft and floating away. Moving on to number two, we have the re-entry. So let's say everything goes fine. Takeoff was a success, the crew survived orbiting space and landing on the moon. Now the only thing they have left to do is come back home. You'd think that they would be excited, you know, to be back home, eating normal food, and you know, being where gravity is. Turns out returning home is something that they fear. And that's because they could burn up or get destroyed destroyed upon re-entry. This happened in 2003 with the Columbia Space Shuttle. Upon re-entering Earth's atmosphere, the shuttle started to disintegrate. Sadly, all seven crew members on board lost their lives. And now, if they do manage to survive re-entry, they gotta worry about landing safely instead of just crashing down full speed into the ground. And in our number one spot today, we have the catastrophe. Honestly, I never even thought about this, but according to Chris Hadfield, some astronauts are afraid of a huge catastrophe occurring on Earth while they're off the planet. Now you might think, hey, that's good. At least you weren't on the planet to witness it. But uh, hello, that means that Earth is now in ruins and their loved ones are dead. Who's going to be alive and at NASA helping them navigate back home? Chances are nobody. So they would be stuck in space, just orbiting around until they run out of supplies. And even if they did somehow re-enter Earth successfully, they're coming back home to nothing. In our number 10 spot, we have the 800 million year old body. Allegedly, in 1969, Soviet scientists stumbled upon something quite extraordinary. A 800 million year old human body preserved in a stone tomb was located 70 feet underground by local miners. Apparently, the perfectly preserved body of a beautiful girl was found outside a remote village in Russia. Some people dismiss this claim to be straight out of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, but others say that it is authentic and that the scientists 
conspire to cover this up as this body alone disproves Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Ooh, yep, I bet you someone somewhere with money decided, nope, we're covering this one up for sure. This would completely disprove all of what scientists believe about the planet and our human existence, and that is very scary and nerve wracking. In our number nine spot, we have the Chandar slab. Also known as the Dashka Stone, this stone was found in 1999 in South Urals and it appears to be a 3D map of the Urals region which could have only been done using aerial or satellite surveys which is interesting to note considering it is believed to be anywhere from 3000 to 50 million years old. Times when of course that wouldn't have been possible. Radiocarbon testing provided no clarity as to when when it was created. Another curious thing about it is that there are inscriptions on it from an unknown language. It's a very mysterious and potentially dark finding that Russian scientists are still puzzled about today. In our number 8 spot we have alien skulls. A Russian researcher and scientist, Vladimir Melikov, discovered two mysterious alien skulls in Russia along with a briefcase that is clearly German and from World War II. It was discovered in a Russian mountain range in Caucasus. The skulls are not human and are believed to have belonged to a bipedal species aka an alien species. Vladimir said this while speaking to a reporter. Note the round hole at the bottom of the head. It is the base of the spine. The position indicates that this creature moved on two legs. Another strange thing is the absence of cranial vault and jaws. A mouth, several holes distributed in a circle. The eye sockets are unusually large. However, the facial bones are flat as in hominids. He believed this belonged to a species that visited Earth. In our number 7 spot we have the Ryazan disc. A mysterious metal chest plate was discovered in Russia and is now being featured in the State Historical Museum. The artifact was found in Ryazan, a place about 200 kilometers from Moscow. The only thing that is known about the object is that it is from the 4th century and that the artifact has similarities to the Greek object, the Antikythera mechanism that was used to predict eclipses and the positions of the planets. Scientists are puzzled over its mysteriousness and apparently there is no explanation for the concentric circles that are covering the surface of the object. Whatever it was used for, there's no denying that it sure looks mystical. It looks like it could have also just been armor for a soldier too, but maybe that's just me. In our number 6 spot we have frozen alien corpses. Scientists have discovered this alleged frozen alien corpse in Siberia in Russia. The area had quite a few sightings of a UFO crash right before the corpse was found. It was reported that the Russian military was sent to the area to clean up the crash and scope out the remains but they missed the bodies. It was said that the corpse was pretty damaged. It was 2 feet high and part of its right leg was missing. Further investigation is being done on this find but this would definitely be a dark finding if proven to be an alien species. In our number 5 spot we have a deadly disease. Siberia, having quite harsh weather conditions, has frozen a lot of artifacts over the thousands of years, including people. A body was discovered after being frozen for a very long time and after a thorough analysis of the body, it was found that the body contained the deadly disease smallpox. The cold climate apparently sometimes keeps the body in good condition and therefore keeps the disease alive and active. Apparently there were a lot of bodies buried in Siberia due to the disease so the people of the area are quite worried about it coming back. Thankfully the scientists took all of the precautions to make sure that it did not spread. In our number 4 spot we have the end of the world. What? Scientists have discovered a crater under Siberia and apparently it's one of the world's largest craters. They are unable to pinpoint how deep the crater is and apparently nobody is willing to find out as of yet. The crater's diameter is over 200 feet across. It has been dubbed the end of the world. It's a mystery as to how this crater was formed. Of course the theory is that there was some kind of explosion and others think it's the work of a meteorite. Could it be a UFO crash? Apparently an enormous amount of methane was found in the surrounding area which makes scientists 
lean more on the meteorite theory. Pretty wild. In our number three spot, we have a 3,000 year old virus. Due to the ice caps melting, a lot of artifacts and centuries old bodies that were once frozen are melting and being uncovered. Apparently, a few hundred feet under the tundra of Siberia, a virus was discovered. A virus that is 30,000 years old. And no, we do not have a cure for this virus. However, it is thankfully not a virus that is a threat to humans, but to amoebas. So at least it's not too big of a concern for us. The finding of this virus has had scientists everywhere wonder what virus may be lurking under the ice caps that we will find in the future. In our number two spot, we have the baby mammoth. Okay, this one isn't dark per se, but I suppose its coat is a darker shade of brown. So, <laughs> fine, I'm stretching, but it needed an honorable mention because it's cool. A baby mammoth was discovered in 2007 in Russia. It is said to be over 48,000 years old, and the remains were found completely intact due to being frozen for all of these years and only recently being revealed due to the ice cap melting. Even the eyes were still fully intact. Whoa. It is apparently now in a museum close to where it was found so that the world can now see it. Pretty cool. In our number one spot, we have the Bronze Age couple. In 2017, archaeologists discovered the remains of a man and woman holding hands. So cute. Truly a tale as old as time. Till death, they did not part. But seriously, this is so cute and wild because this couple is said to be from the Bronze Age about 4,800 to 4,300 years ago. The other crazy thing about this couple is that the man had a wide jade ring in his eye socket. There were apparently more rings on his chest, and beside his knee was a bag with medals that have an unknown purpose. Beside the woman, there was a 13 centimeter jade knife. Apparently, the jade rings were a symbol for money, and only a small number of craftsmen in eastern Siberia could make them. Scientists have also been puzzled over how people of this time were able to produce such fine carving. What technology did they use? In our number four spot today, we have the wandering black. Hole. The James Webb Telescope is one of the most exciting space tools of all time, and it has already revealed some incredible information and photos to us in its debut year. But in order to fully feel how incredible these things are, we have to remember where we came from. The James Webb was preceded by the infamous Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble walked so James Webb could run. Since its launch into low Earth orbit in the 1990s, this space telescope has been delivering us amazing space discoveries, and this one is a bit of a frightening one. Back in 2017, the Hubble located a black hole, which is already frightening, but this one was peculiar. That is because they found out that this one was being pulled or manipulated by gravitational waves. Basically what this means is that at some point, this black hole is going to escape its own galaxy and begin roaming the universe. Black holes are bad enough. I don't want them to start wandering around. Turns out, however, that this really is a possibility, and it's happened in more than this one instance. Googling these wandering black holes is sure to send anyone into a doomsday spin. The good news, however, is that despite this black hole weighing approximately the same as one billion suns as it flies through space at five million miles per hour, it's estimated to be about eight billion light years from Earth. So at this point, we're pretty safe. In our number three spot today, we have the Amazonian giant centipede. These centipedes are the largest centipede species in the world with the ability to grow over a foot. These gross things will prey on basically anything they can, which includes other large insects, spiders, millipedes, scorpions, even tarantulas. But because they're so huge, it also includes small lizards, frogs, snakes, mice, and even bats. They have crazy hunting techniques for the largest of their prey and have been known to climb on the ceiling of caves in order to get the bats, which is both incredible and very scary. These things are also venomous, and while it hasn't been a common occurrence for humans to die from a bite, there is one recorded incident that took place in 2014. This incident happened in Venezuela, and a person passed away after being bitten by one of these giant centipedes after it had hidden itself in an empty soda can. There are a lot of dangerous things crawling around on the forest floor of the Amazon, but this one might take the cake on the most disgusting looking. In our number two spot today, we have invisible fire. A lot of these horrible 
horrible searches are horrible because of the images that the search will reveal. But for this one, the issue with it is the fact that you can't see it. Invisible fires are actually ethanol fires. These are the fires that are created by alcohol, even the kinds we drink, and motor fuel as well, which is why they can be quite an issue for race car drivers and crews. Ethanol burns blue and smokeless, but these blue flames can be virtually invisible to the naked eye. This provides an incredibly huge obstacle, obviously. We now know how dangerous and deadly fires can be, so how do we fight something that is dangerous and deadly? but that we can't see. It truly is one of those things that upon learning about, I suddenly developed some sort of an irrational fear over it. And that one scene in Talladega Nights makes a lot more sense now. In our number one spot today, we have Alien Hand Syndrome. If someone told me about this before I made this list, I would have thought that they were trying to play like a silly little trick on me, but this one really does exist. Alien Hand Syndrome is an eerie phenomenon that occurs when a person suddenly does not have control over their hand or any limb anymore. The hand will begin acting acting like it has a mind of its own, which truly is a terrifying thought. Sometimes people will find themselves in a situation where they're forced to keep the alien hand under control with a hand they thankfully still have control over so as to ensure they don't harm themselves or anyone else. The most common factor regarding this syndrome is that the primary motor cortex, which controls the hand movement, is isolated from the pre-motor cortex influences, but it still remains intact and able to execute movements. All in all, this isn't like the deadliest one on this list but it certainly is very, very creepy. And unless you want to be incredibly freaked out, I would potentially refrain from Googling it. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Cordodes Formosinus. Sure. This is the scientific name for a kind of horsehair worm that has its sights set on the praying mantis. This little parasite, well, not little at all actually, is a type that will pass through a variety of different hosts through its life stages. They start out their life in the guts of small insects that the praying mantis would feed on. From there, once the mantis is nice and infected, these disgusting creatures begin to grow. When the worm is sufficiently mature, it takes control over the insect's body and directs them to a body of water It gets them to jump in, which allows this horrifying thing to swim out. These worms can grow up to 90 centimeters long, which is disgusting, and they are super dangerous to the mantis. That is because when it breaks free in order to go and reproduce itself, it leaves behind a half-empty mantis husk. A search of these guys will have videos and images of these guys coming up, including people dunking, praying mantises into water, and watching these wiggly guys escape. It honestly made me feel sucked to my stomach, so I can't even imagine how the mantis feels. In our number nine spot today, we have Blank Room Soup. If you've been on the internet for a while, chances are you've probably seen this video floating around. This entire thing really is just the stuff of nightmares. Basically, the video is set in a blank room and it features a man eating some kind of soup. The soup eater has his face censored and it sounds like he is crying while eating this soup. And this is all creepy enough, but there is another totally freaky thing in this video. Basically, there's a guy in dark clothing with a mascot head on who is rubbing this guy's back as he eats the soup. Soon, another guy wearing an identical outfit comes in and does the exact same thing. I realize this sounds very strange as I'm explaining it, but it truly is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. For years, rumors swirled about this video, some saying it originated on the dark web, and the guy eating soup was being held against his will, and the soup was made out of his own wife. How horrible is that? While we may have a far less sinister answer as to where this video came from, it truly still is chilling to watch. In our number 8 spot today, we have vent worms under a microscope. This one is so random, I'm not even sure why you would be googling it, but if I'm being honest, you're definitely better off just not doing that. Hydrothermal vents live on the ocean floor and they are the result of tectonic activity. Through this tectonic activity, as seawater seeps downward through the oceanic crust, it gets really hot and becomes very rich in chemicals. This leads to the water becoming so buoyant that it comes back out of the surface of the sea floor, and that is what is called a hydrothermal vent. The water coming out of the vent is that same super hot, super chemically rich water, and it is an extremely important part of underwater ecosystems. The water from the vent is highly acidic and hot, while the water in the depths of the ocean is slightly basic and freezing cold. There are many different smaller species who come to the vent areas because of the chemicals in the water, as well as the heat, which helps certain types of food sources grow, which they then want to consume. One of these creatures is aptly named 
the vent worm. These guys are super tiny and they can't really be seen with the naked eye and we should consider ourselves lucky for that because of what they look like under a microscope. These creatures are fully nightmare inducing with creepy hook like teeth. I'm just glad they aren't an everyday occurrence in the ocean cause uh, I would never go swimming again. In our number seven spot today, we have the Australian paralysis tick. Ticks are considered ectoparasites since they wreak havoc on their hosts from the outside of the body, while most other parasites need to be inside the body. There are, of course, different kinds of ticks that can transmit diseases such as Lyme disease, but in these kinds of cases, the transmission of disease is not actually the tick's goal, which is why today we are talking specifically about the Australian paralysis tick. These ticks purposefully secrete a neurotoxin that causes paralysis. All right, definitely not good, but this can be especially dangerous depending on the different areas that the tick paralyzes because it has the ability to paralyze something like the lungs which of course would be a very bad situation. The good news is, is that once the tick is removed, the effects of the toxin should wear off completely. I thought when I get the chance to go to Australia, my only worries would be the snakes and the spiders, but I guess I'll just add this tick to the list. Safe to say these creepy crawlies are just one Google search away from sending you down a rabbit hole of the disgusting. In our number six spot today, we have Vandelia serosa. Vandelia serosa is a very tiny eel-like parasitic fish. Yeah, I guess this is just a parasite list now. This is what happened. I googled one of these guys and then went on a spree. That's why I'm warning you against it. These guys feed on other fish by swimming into their gills, where they then began drinking their blood, which gave them the nickname vampire fish. Vampire fish can also enter the human body through any orifice it finds. Okay. and it will drink human blood as well. They have backwards facing spines, so they will lodge themselves wherever they enter the body. After filling up on their tasty meal, they usually end up passing away there, but they are bloated from eating so much. This means that surgery will be required in order to remove it, and depending on where it ended up, this surgery has varying degrees of difficulty. If you get what I'm saying, orifices, surgery, it's not good. In our number five spot today, we have the hagfish. There are about 76 different species of hagfish and some of them are known to live as deep as 5,500 feet below the surface of the ocean. While hagfish isn't particularly the best name in the world, they are also known by the equally disgusting name of slime eels. These creatures definitely are pretty horrendous to look at, no offense to them. Rather than a mouth with a jaw, these strange looking creatures instead just have a ring of razor sharp teeth. Really love it. They use these teeth to burrow into the flesh of dead whales on the sea floor, and once inside, they then basically just stay there and eat their way from the inside out. That is all horrible enough, but what's worse is how they got their slimy nicknames. Basically, their body produces a sort of goop that is used to ward off predators. If they are stuck in the clutches of a terrifying predator, they release what is described as, quote, copious amounts of this slimy goop that is designed to clog the mouth or gills of said predator, which will hopefully have them releasing these little devils. Aside from this defense mechanism, if their slime doesn't work and they find themselves still caught in the grasp of a predator, they can sort of tie themselves into a knot in order to hopefully escape the clutches. All in all, a creepy slithery little slimy creature with a ring of razors for a mouth, it's just a thing I personally would rather not search up on the web. In our number three spot today, we have the Rat King. I would have thought that this was just the male antagonist in the Nutcracker, but turns out it is far, far worse. Rats are pretty freaky to many people for a variety of reasons, but the image of this one is even worse than just a single standalone rat. Basically, the term Rat King refers to a large group of rats that all have their tails tied together at the end. It is indeed a rare occurrence, and the tails could be stuck together for a variety of reasons, whether it's because they hair got entangled together, there's some sort of sticky substance holding them together, or just, you know, a regular old knot. Whatever the case is, a Google search of this term will only have images coming up and it truly is unsettling to see. It's obviously sad because no one wants to see an animal in a tricky situation, but also, it's rats. Rats are creepy. A bunch of rats all tied together is extra creepy. The reports of these rat kings mainly come from European countries, and although the existence of this phenomena is for some reason debated due to the limited evidence of its natural occurrence, there are still plenty of terrifying image results any search will yield. In our 
number two spot today, we have a pilot's view in a storm. Taylor and I were on a plane this week, a few actually, so when I found out about this via watching a video, I was thankful I hadn't seen it before our flight. The view for a pilot has got to be pretty great for a lot of the job, flying over beautiful places with incredible sights, that sounds amazing. And you know, pilots have only the best eyesight, so they're seeing it all super well. Flying at night, however, well, for pilots, I'm sure it's totally fine and normal, but when the average passenger catches a glimpse of what they are seeing, especially when the weather isn't exactly being kind, well, it was definitely enough to totally freak me out. A Google search of what a pilot sees when flying at night through a snowstorm isn't exactly a comforting sight. In fact, it's absolutely terrifying. It looks like we're traveling to another universe, not just barreling through our skies. I of course trust the pilots who have the training and the expertise, but it's just very unnerving to know what they are seeing while I'm just passed out with my neck pillow, you know? In our number one spot today, we have the hairy frog. Last time we talked about some weird frogs, today we've got another kind. This frog isn't poisonous. It isn't growing eggs out of its back. These frogs simply just are hairy, and it is so unsettling. The Central African Trichobatatrachus robustus. These frogs, they're often referred to as the hairy frog or the horror frog, which I really agree with. These frogs have the unusual feature of having a thick mane of hair that is seen on their flanks and hind legs in the males of the species. According to experts, many believe that this feature is useful to the frogs because it could help them to to stay underwater for longer periods of time. This proves to be extremely useful when they are tasked with guarding the female's eggs. This isn't the only weird feature of these frogs, however. Unfortunately, frogs also have claws. These bones burst through the toes of their hind legs, and it is said that they are used in, quote, interspecific combat. This has all led to these guys receiving the nickname Wolverine Frog, which I honestly think is the most apt. Maybe they'll make a, an appearance in Deadpool 3. Who knows? Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have walking corpse syndrome. Cotard syndrome, also known as walking corpse syndrome, is a rare and severe mental illness that can cause a person to believe that they are dead or do not exist. Individuals with this disorder may also experience delusions of immortality or think that their internal organs have stopped functioning. Basically, those suffering from the syndrome can believe that they don't exist, that they are already dead, or that somehow they have lost all of their organs or other vital fluids. This syndrome can also occur alongside other mental health conditions such as depression, schizophrenia, or bipolar disorder. The causes of this syndrome are not really fully understood, but it is thought to result from abnormalities in brain function and also structure. The treatment for this syndrome typically involves a combination of medication and psychotherapy, and in some really severe cases, hospitalization might also be necessary. Googling this syndrome can definitely send you down a rabbit hole of terrifying things that our brains are capable of doing and the scary things that they can convince us are real. In our number nine spot today, we have spontaneous human combustion. All right, spontaneous human combustion, exactly what it sounds like. It is a phenomenon where a human body can seemingly suddenly burst into flames without an external source of ignition, okay? Just add that to the list of things that you should just be terrified of, I guess. Despite numerous reports of such incidents throughout history, History, the scientific community remains pretty skeptical about the existence of this phenomenon, but there is some very interesting and horrifying evidence. Some theories suggest that certain chemical reactions within the body could lead to the ignition of flammable gases produced by the digestive system. Others believe that external factors such as cigarettes or alcohol consumption may have been involved in the reported cases. While spontaneous human combustion remains a mystery, it continues to fascinate and intrigue scientists and medical professionals and just the general public alike because it is a horrible thought. If it really does exist, it's basically just a game of waiting and hoping not. In our number eight spot today, we have the sleeping sickness. Sleeping sickness, also known as African trypanosomiasis, is a parasitic disease caused by a protozoan parasite. It is transmitted to humans through the bite of the tsetse fly found in rural areas of sub-Saharan Africa. Symptoms of the disease include fever, headache, joint pain, and itching, followed by fatigue, confusion, and disturbed sleep patterns, which is what gives the disease its name. If left untreated, sleeping sickness can lead to severe 
severe neurological damage and even death. A diagnosis can actually be very difficult, but early detection and treatment with medication can thankfully cure the disease. Sleeping sickness actually remains a very significant public health problem in many parts of Africa, particularly in areas with limited access to healthcare. Of course, googling this sickness will have images of the fly popping up, photos of infection sites, ill people who are currently dealing with the effects of the illness, and many other just very grim scenarios. All in all, this health problem is definitely one that people need to know about so research into it can continue, but just be wary that your search might yield some unsettling results. In our number 7 spot today we have Hantavirus. We hear a lot about how rats and mice living among humans was the cause for the hasty spread of disease in time periods like the medieval, and thankfully it seems to be less of a problem now, but that doesn't mean the problem has simply ceased. Aside from stealing your food, there are still many viruses these pesky critters can spread, and one of those is Hantavirus. The virus is found in their urine, droppings, and saliva, and it can be spread to people when they come into contact with contaminated surfaces or inhale the virus in the air. Symptoms of hantavirus infection can range from mild flu-like symptoms to more severe respiratory and kidney problems. There is no specific treatment or vaccine for hantavirus infection, and it can even be fatal in some cases. Okay? Prevention measures include controlling rodent populations, of course, avoiding contact with rodent excrement, which should just be a goal on a day-to-day, -day, and taking precautions when cleaning areas with signs of rodent activity. If you've got a mouse problem, you might want to stop procrastinating that call to the exterminator. It might be more urgent than you once thought. In our number 6 spot today we have anesthesia awareness. This is something you should definitely never google if you're a person who already has anxiety surrounding surgery, or if you or anyone you know and love is getting surgery soon, okay? Just, you don't want to hear about it. Anesthesia awareness, also known as unintended intraoperative awareness, is a rare but very distressing complex application of general anesthesia. It occurs when a patient is aware of their surroundings in the surgical procedure being performed on them despite being given medication to render them unconscious and unaware. Like your body is asleep, but your mind is very, very awake. Anesthesia awareness can cause significant psychological trauma and may result in long-term mental health issues such as PTSD. Patients who experience this phenomenon may report feelings of panic, helplessness, and even pain during surgery. Although the incidence of anesthesia awareness is very low, estimated to occur in less than 1% of all surgeries, it remains a concern for both patients and healthcare providers. Various risk factors have been identified, such as the use of muscle relaxants, inadequate dosing of the anesthesia, and just different medical conditions. There are, thankfully, preventative measures in place to try and avoid this type of scenario, and you can absolutely chat with your doctor if you're worried about this sort of thing, but at the end of the day, just knowing about it is enough to give me chill. In our number 5 spot today we have rabies. <laughs> Just so that's it. Okay, I feel like when I was a kid we heard a lot about rabies for some reason, but now as an adult we don't really talk about it very often. That's fine, I mean I don't have a lot of reason to talk about rabies, but I don't think I ever realized how serious it actually is and how it affects people. And now that I've googled it, I've gone down into the depths of the internet about Rabies. Rabies is a viral disease that affects the nervous system of mammals, including humans, of course, and it is transmitted through the saliva of an infected animal, usually through a bite or a scratch. Once the virus enters the body, it travels to the brain and causes inflammation, which leads to a range of symptoms. These include fever, headache, muscle weakness. As the disease progresses, the person may experience more severe symptoms like hallucinations, seizures, and paralysis. Searching and learning more, seeing it in action, and all of that honestly is just terrifying. Rabies is very serious and is a potentially fatal disease if left untreated. It is preventable, thankfully, with the use of vaccines and proper medical care after exposure, but without access to these sorts of things, it can be extremely dangerous. To help avoid with problems like this, it's best to limit contact with wild animals, particularly bats, raccoons, skunks, and foxes, which are common carriers of the virus. So if you live in really any city in Canada, Good luck, man. <laughs> They're just all of them. Just 
around. In our number four spot today, we have Fatal Familial Insomnia. Fatal Familial Insomnia, or FFI, is an extremely rare and fatal genetic disorder that affects the brain. It is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner, which means that an affected person has a 50% chance of passing the disease onto their offspring. The onset of FFI usually occurs somewhere in the middle of life and is characterized by progressive insomnia, which worsens over time and is accompanied by hallucinations, delirium, and eventually dementia. The disease can progress rapidly, with death occurring within a few months to a few years after the onset of symptoms. FFI is caused by a mutation in the PRNP gene, which leads to the formation of an abnormal prion protein in the brain. This protein accumulates and damages brain tissue, leading to the symptoms of FFI. Unfortunately, there is no cure for FFI, and treatment is really limited to just alleviating symptoms. Research into the disease is ongoing, and scientists hope to one day find a cure or a way to prevent the disease from developing. Searching this terrifying and very real disorder can lead you to the terrifying world of prions and all of the horrors that surround them. In our number three spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. Okay, if you want to be a part of one of the most enduring mysteries, then you need to learn about the Dyatlov Pass incident. If you've never heard of it, basically in February of 1959, nine young Soviet hikers sent out to trek through the Ural Mountains. They had set up a camp, and sometime during the night, something happened that made them cut their way out of the tent and all flee the site. Leaving in such a rush, they were of course underdressed for the bitterly cold weather, and six of them ended up passing away from hypothermia, which is extremely tragic. The other three, however, is where this story takes a very frightening turn. Like I mentioned before, no one knows why they fled the tent in the first place, and the last three hikers were found passed away with severe signs of physical trauma that no one could agree on what had caused it. In 2019, the investigation was reopened, and just a couple years ago, there was a conclusion that a kind of avalanche called a slab avalanche was the cause for these injuries. Before you come at me in the comments, I know not everyone is convinced that's what happened, and I don't blame you. Many people don't agree with this quote official conclusion, and when you learn about the nature of the injuries, it really does seem strange. This remains one of those cases that people just can't quite agree on what happened, and learning about it only leaves you with more questions than answers. In our number two spot today, we have the Hoyabach monster. This monster is a mysterious creature that has allegedly been sighted in the dense forests of Germany. It is said to be a humanoid creature standing over seven feet tall with long arms and a muscular build covered in matted fur. Witnesses describe it as having a broad, flat face with glowing eyes and large fangs protruding from its mouth. The first reported sighting of this monster dates back to the early 20th century, but there have been numerous sightings reported in the decades since. Many locals believe it to be a malevolent being, and there are stories of it attacking and killing livestock and even humans who venture too close to its territory. Despite numerous attempts to capture or study the creature, there is no concrete evidence of its existence that has ever been found, and some skeptics dismiss this monster as nothing more than a myth or a legend, but others remain convinced that it is a real, undiscovered species lurking in the forests. Finally, in our number one spot today, we have the cattle crimes. Adding one more enduring unsolved mystery to this list, we have these crimes which were revealed when a set of documents became declassified and they described this super grim FBI investigation that took place in the mid 1970s at the request of US Senators Floyd Haskell of Colorado and Carl Curtis of Nebraska. I guess there was some weird sort of connection between these horrific things being done to cattle across as many as 21 states. In a letter, from 1975, Senator Haskell was able to identify 130 of these strange macabre cases in Colorado alone. All of the cases were eerily similar, which is unsettling considering the details. In most cases, the cattle would have their left ear, left eye, rectum, and reproductive organ all missing, and all the blood was drained from the carcass, but there was no blood on the ground around them, nor were there any footprints. How absolutely horrifying is that? Some people chose to believe that the cause for these was mysterious helicopters and UFOs, but there's a letter from Senator Curtis to the FBI director that says, quote, The series of incidents stretching from Oklahoma to Nebraska in which cattle have been dismembered in some kind of strange witchcraft cult. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think UFOs or witches did it. It wasn't until 1979 that the FBI was granted jurisdiction to begin investigating these weird happenings, and when they did, 
did, they determined that most of the instances were the result of quote, normal predator and scavenger activity. And while that answer sounds a little fishy, the documents went forward to reveal that not all of the instances could be accounted for. Also, this idea of it being a completely normal scenario also contradicts reports that say that the techniques used in these horrible instances were quote, very professional and sometimes even referred to as being conducted with surgical precision. I'm sorry, but a wolf or a coyote or a bear or whatever predator you want to say did this, ripping apart its meal isn't exactly a surgically precise operation. No arrests were ever made and while it was deemed solved, a ton of mystery still surrounds these stories to this day. radioactive man. After a fateful accident in Japan's Tokamura nuclear power plant in 1999, worker Hisashi Uchi suffered immensely. When he arrived at the University of Tokyo Hospital after being exposed to the highest level of radiation of any human in history, doctors were stunned. The nuclear power plant technician had almost zero white blood cells and thus no immune system. Soon he'd be crying blood as his skin melted. Kept in a special radiation ward to protect him from hospital borne pathogens, the profuse amount of radiation coursing through his blood eradicated the introduced cells and skin grafts could not hold. I can't take it anymore, he cried out, but at his family's insistence, the doctors continued their experimental treatments even as his skin began to melt from his body. Then on the 59th day in the hospital, he had a heart attack, but his family agreed that he should be resuscitated in case of death, so the doctors revived him. He'd eventually have three heart attacks in one hour. It was only a merciful final cardiac arrest due to multi-organ failure on December 21st, 1999 that released him from the pain. Now this was 83 days after the incident. I can't imagine the pain he was in and why the doctors and his family kept trying to save him. Next up, we have green boots. Climbing Mount Everest is a very dangerous thing to do, and unfortunately, some people who have tried to do it have met their untimely death. As of November 2022, 310 people have died on Everest. Over 200 bodies remain on the mountain and have not been removed due to the dangerous conditions. Now, as morbid as it sounds, current climbers use these bodies as location markers, and Green Boots is one of them. Green Boots is named for the colored boot the climber was wearing, and he is a landmark on the main northeast ridge route of Mount Everest. The body has not been officially identified, but it is believed to be Swang Pajor, an Indian climber who died on Everest in 1996. All expeditions from the north side encountered the body curled in the limestone alcove cave at 27,900 feet until it was moved in 2014. Green Boots was moved to a less conspicuous location by members of a Chinese expedition. Now in 2006, British mountaineer David Sharp was found in a hypothermic state in Green Boots Cave by climber Mark Ingalls and his party. Mark continued to ascend after radioing for advice on how to help David, which he was unable to provide. Now David died of extreme cold some hours later. Approximately three dozen other climbers would have passed by the dying man that day, and it had been suggested that those who noticed him mistook him for Green Boots and therefore paid little attention. Overall, it's just super sad, but I don't know why people would risk their lives for this. Now we have the Victorian British Eight Mummies. Okay, so I've seen people talk about this before on Twitter, but I've never actually delved into this topic, and well, I think I should have left it that way. They first started with the Egyptian mummy, which was crumbled into a solution to stanch internal bleeding, but other parts of the body soon followed. Skull was one common ingredient, taken in powdered form to cure head ailments. Even the moss that grew over a buried skull called Usnia became a prized additive, powder believed to cure nosebleeds and possibly epilepsy. Human fat was used to treat the outside of the body, and doctors prescribed bandages soaked in it for wounds 
and rubbing fat into the skin was considered to be a remedy for gout. Blood was procured as fresh as possible, while it was still thought to contain the vitality of the body, because yes, they used the blood for more remedies. Now, thankfully, the practice dwindled in the 18th century, around the time Europeans began regularly using forks for eating and soap for bathing, but all I gotta say is you. <laughs> Moving on to Carl Tanzler. I need to tell y'all about Carl Tanzler because he is just such a truly messed up man. In 1930, Carl believed he'd found his one true love. While working as a radiologist in Florida, he met a young Cuban-American woman, Maria Elena Magaro de Hoyas. She was suffering from tuberculosis and died the next year. Carl paid for her funeral and visited her mausoleum regularly. He was obsessed with Maria. Now, in the dead of night in 1933, he took her body from the mausoleum and back to his home in a red wagon. He put her skeleton back together using coat hangers, stuffed her with rags, and made her a wig from her own hair. She was dressed and put in his bed until seven years later, following rumors of the destruction of her body, and he was discovered by police. While her body was covered with clothes, her face was a death mask of her former self, created by Carl, and was kept in his bed after the coroner had removed the rest of her body. Now, unbelievably, the statute of limitations had expired, and Carl's case was dismissed out of court, but yeah, there is just so much wrong with that. I am just speechless. Now we have the chainsaw invention. In 1780, two Scottish doctors invented the prototype of the chainsaw. Now this wasn't cutting down trees or anything, oh no. John Atkin and James Jeffrey invented the hand crank chainsaw to cut through the pelvises of delivering mothers who were having trouble pushing their babies out. And to make things worse, mothers were completely conscious throughout the entire process. Now that just hurts to think about. Now, those women were just so, so strong. Now, after seeing how well it worked out in the delivery room, well, that is according to the male doctors, the machine was then co-opted to saw through wood and other materials, gradually growing in size to become the chainsaw we know today. Now, thank God we've made more advancements when it comes to giving birth, because just, wow. <laughs> then there's the brain-eating parasite. Neglaria fowleri is a free-living amoeba that is so small that it can only be seen with a microscope. It is commonly found in warm fresh water such as lakes, rivers, and hot springs, and soil. Now the parasite infects people when the water containing the amoeba enters the body through the nose. This typically happens when people go swimming, diving, or when they put their head under fresh water. The amoeba then travels up the nose to the brain where it destroys the brain tissue and causes a devastating infection that is almost always fatal. Now the first symptoms usually start about five days after infection but they can start within 1 to 12 days. Symptoms may include headache, fever, nausea, or vomiting. Later symptoms can include stiff neck, confusion, lack of attention to people and surroundings, seizures, hallucinations, and coma. After symptoms start, the disease progresses rapidly and usually causes death within about 5 days, but the death can happen within 1 to 18 days. Yeah, remind me to never swim in fresh water again. The Highway of Tears. The Highway of Tears is a 400 147 mile long corridor of Highway 16 between Prince George and Prince Rupert in British Columbia, Canada, which has been the location of crimes against missing and dead Indigenous women. Accounts vary as to the exact number of victims, but according to the RCMP Project EPANA, the number of victims is fewer than 18, while Indigenous organizations estimate that the number is higher than 40. In 2015, the federal government launched a national inquiry into the cases. That year, Carolyn Bennett, now a federal minister of Crown Indigenous Relations Canada claim that the national number of victims in Canada is likely over 1,200, which is just insane, and it's disgusting that no one really seems to care about these women and girls. Now, the region of the Highway of Tears is characterized by poverty and, until 2017, lacked adequate public transportation, which forced many locals to resort to hitchhiking as a form of transit. Now, this directly resulted in some of the deaths and disappearances. Some activists argue that institutional racism and sexism have affected the searches for these indigenous women, and we just need to put more resources into these disappearances. Now we have burn degrees. We've all heard of first, second, and third degree burns, right? Well, what if I told you there also existed fourth, fifth, and sixth degree burns? But wait, isn't third degree burns considered the worst? Apparently no. Fourth degree burns occur when heat damage destroys the dermis and muscle tissue is affected. 
Like third degree burns, fourth degree burns result in scarring and the loss of keratin, loss of hair shafts and fingernails and toenails. Fifth degree burns happen when all the skin and subcutaneous tissues are destroyed, exposing muscle. These burns can be fatal due to damage to major arteries and veins. Fifth degree burn injuries also may require amputation due to the damage to the muscles. Permanent and prominent scarring with the loss of keratin in the area of the burn will also occur. Six degree burns occur when the heat destroys the muscles, charring and exposing the bone. These bones are almost always fatal, and uh, just saying that gives me goosebumps. That's absolutely horrible. And while researching this topic, I made the right decision by not looking up any photos related to this. So be like me and please don't look at them. Up next, we have Richard Chase. Richard Chase was a disturbed man, and in 1976, he was involuntarily committed to a mental institution when he was taken to a hospital after injecting rabbit's blood into his veins. Now while there, he broke the necks of two birds he caught and drank their blood. Chase was then diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and after undergoing treatments, he was deemed no longer a danger to society, and later that year, he was released into his mother's custody. But just a year later, he claimed the life of his first victim. Two weeks after the first death, he attempted to enter the home of a woman, but because her doors were locked, he walked away. Chase later told detectives that he took locked doors as a sign that he was not welcome, but unlocked doors were an invitation to come inside. Um, sir? Okay. <laughs> now, he ended the lives of more people, eating their organs and other body parts, and drinking their blood. He eventually was caught and arrested, and police who searched his apartment found that the walls, floor, ceiling, refrigerator, and all of his eating and drinking utensils were soaked in blood. He was eventually found guilty of six counts of first-degree homicide, and the jury rejected the argument that he was not guilty by reason of insanity and sentenced him to death. And lastly, we have the Lake Nao disaster. On August 21st, 1986, farmers living near Lake Neos heard rumbling. At the same time, a frothy spray shot hundreds of feet out of the lake, and a white cloud formed over the water. From the ground, the cloud grew 328 feet tall and flowed across the land. When farmers near the lake left their houses to investigate the noise, they lost consciousness. The heavy cloud sunk into the valley, and people in the affected areas collapsed. Over the next two days, people from the surrounding areas entered the valley to find the bodies of humans and cows lying on the ground. By August 23rd, the cloud had mostly blown away, and scientists soon learned that the cloud contained carbon dioxide, CO2. Now, when the CO2 concentration was 15% or less, people lost consciousness and later revived, but individuals who had inhaled more than 15% of CO2 stopped breathing within minutes and died. Scientists determined that the CO2 had been trapped at the bottom of Lake Neos for a long time and then erupted. Now, now, in the end, 1,746 people and 3,500 livestock died. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 dark things you should never Google. Which one scares you the most? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host, Emily, and I'm going to try to mentally scrub all the horrifying information I learned today. I hope to see you next time. Peace.